show. All right, all right, all right. Uh, by the way, Campos is asking me better movie, soundtrack, Top Gun, or Karate Kid. That's pretty good. I, I'm probably going to go. I'm probably going to lean a Top Gun slightly. That's pretty good. So that's a pretty good comment. Pretty good uh, question there. All right, uh, Youngin, have you seen the new uh, Top Gun Maverick yet? No, I'm not really all that interested. I'm going to be honest. Uh, yep. Have you watched the original? I have seen the original. Um, I had a camp counselor. I don't remember how old I was, but he kept saying, you know, he would say, talk to me, Goose, talk to me, Goose, like all the time. And nobody understood. So he made us watch Top Gun uh, at camp one day. Just real waste of a summer day. You know, beautiful outside. And we're crowded in this little dark room watching Top Gun. It was a fine movie. But, you know, I'm not like tripping over myself to go see the new one. I hope it's good, though. I hope people enjoy oh, no, it. It's great. It's great, actually. It's great. They did a marvelous job of weaving. How old were you when you watched that first one? I don't even remember, man. Old enough to go to summer camp. So 12. Well, that's not, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You may, well, 15 is different than 12. I said 13. I didn't say 15. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You may want to, I mean, you may want to watch it again. You might appreciate it a little bit more, a little older, actually. It's a great movie, actually. And what they did with number with the Maverick. I, I gotta say, best sequel ever, best sequel I've ever seen in my life. I don't think anybody's ever knocked a sequel out of the park. And Godfather Two is pretty good. Jaws Two is pretty decent. I'm trying to think of some really, really good ones. Oh, the uh, the indie series, the number two was good too. Uh, Star Wars had a good follow up, the original one. Bad Boys Three was the best bad boys of the three of them so oh you know you know what i've never saw i never saw three bad boys two was really good man i never saw three my wife saw it i know that my wife and my daughter saw it i never there saw are several three. moments in which i think i teared up man out of joy and sadness bro like i'm just for what I, it I, is I, you know i enjoyed for, uh, one and two i enjoyed for, one and two I've for a buddy cop movie life. with will smith and martin lawrence they had a little depth to it so plus a couple callbacks that i was like oh man I got to see it. Uh, Dark Knight. Yes, that was a good follow-up, actually. Dark Knight was, was a good follow-up. Although I, I actually liked the original a little bit more because of the whole storyline and everything. I thought they did a marvelous job telling that Batman storyline. I, I really thought they did an excellent, excellent job of setting the scene for then the follow-up of the Dark Knight after. But I, I, I think that one actually goes under the radar. I, I really enjoyed it. All right, now you guys are getting crazy with Leprechaun 2 and Chucky 2 and all that. You know, all right, that's it. The weed starts stepping in at the moment there. All right. All right, so let's uh, let's get to it. Um, your thoughts overall on what you saw last week from camp? Uh, you know, it, it's – I always say it's very hard to judge a team when it's playing against itself, like especially one that's just learning a new offense and it's just trying to get some reps in. Like you're, it, it, it's like when you're in college and, and you play your roommate in FIFA or 2K over and over and over and over again. Like it doesn't matter who's better than who, you know what each other is trying to do. So, you know, I don't want to read too far into what I'm about to say, but defense dominated both days that we were able to watch last week. Dominated. It wasn't close. They're, they're supposed, supposed to, but it wasn't even, it was not close. And there's no pads on and, you know, these runs. Which, by the way, puts the offensive line at another disadvantage without pads. Yeah, and disadvantage is one way to put it. There is no Toronto Armstead, okay? Like, so let's let's remember that their best offensive lineman is not practicing yet. He's still rehabbing from that knee injury. But, man, when I tell you Christian Wilkins and Zach Sealer were tearing the interior of that O-line apart, man, I can't tell you which team they were practicing against. I can't tell you the players they were, they were whooping. But they're whooping them, and it did not matter who was lined up in front of them. Christian Wilkins in particular, man, if, if we're seeing this form of play, if that translates to pads in the regular season, we might be talking Pro Bowl for this man, bro, and big yeah, contract. Yeah, but I, I, I've, seen, I, I've seen a ton of people look great without pads. And then and not that Chris, hey, I like Christian You know, Wilkins, there's those, those magic little words. I, I, don't think, I don't think this has anything to do with this, but I've seen a ton of guys excel without pads, and then once you put the pads on, I mean, he's on the cusp. He was great last year. So it looks no, no, like he's no. continued to develop. Like I said, it, it beats looking the other direction. 
it, it beats looking like he took a step back. It, it, at the very least, he's keeping up the high level of play. So if this keeps translating into pads and into training camp regular season, then I think that we're going to talk about a massive year from Christian Wilkins. But uh, obviously the, the plays that everybody talked about on what, what was it, Thursday, were, were the deep balls from, from Tua to Tyreek. Uh, one of them, he beat Noy Monogany. That's the one that's on Twitter and on social media. Uh, I thought that was an excellent throw. Uh, that was it was an excellent throw. Uh, Angle is still not really doing it justice. Uh, it kind of looks like Tyreek slowed down and turned his body a little bit. And yeah, I guess he did kind of reach backwards for it. But we're really nitpicking what was otherwise a, an excellent throw. We got him in stride. It was great coverage by Noah, man. Like I, I, I saw like a crumb of slander for for Noah about that coverage and that play. What the hell are you supposed to do with Tyreek Hill, man? He would have roasted. Go. <laughs> he roasted anybody that was covering him that day. Like you were anybody. It was a go route, man. That man has the bit. The, I, I the actually I, 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 I'm actually more depressed if Noah shuts down Tyreek. Yeah. So like I, I think it was. I thought it was great coverage, and it was a perfect throw. It was a perfect throw. Um, they have not posted the. If Noah the, shuts down Tyreek, then all of a sudden I think he's Kyle Lowry. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He has not. Post, they have not posted the other deep ball to Tyreek, that 55 or 60 yarder, depending on if we want to count that as a touchdown. Um, I, I thought, you know, the, the discussion around that was was getting too too detailed. You know, I was like, man, like I thought it was a sack, to be honest. Like I thought that play was a sack. It didn't matter. He still had the arm strength to get it off. It's not his fault that he got sacked. The line crumbled. But uh, it was, again, it was on the money, had good zip to it good velocity, um, and clearly made him feel some type of way about it because we heard him reference it multiple times during his press conference afterwards. So, uh, you know, they're still learning. They're, they're, they're still, you know, as we heard, um, I, I think it was uh, Cedric Wilson say, you know, those days when they're learning something new, they get whooped like this. The defense really eats them up. But the days when they know what they're doing, then it's much more of a battle. So uh, that's what this time of year is all about, man. I think we made the reference when I was on here last week it's like that car that you keep in the garage. You don't like to drive it. You know, that that, that Ferrari or that that old uh, old Challenger. You don't want to let it collect dust every now and then. You got to turn the engine on. You got to, you know, get it running. You got to make sure that when you do need it, it's not just going to sputter out on you. So that's what they're doing here. They're, they're keeping the engine running. They're, they're greasing it up a little bit, just making sure it'll be smooth. By the time training camp comes around in July, they're not having to play catch up and install so much. They're, they're, they're able to refine the foundation that they've already laid. I'm with you there. Now, hey, listen, the one thing that I, and I just explained this a little, a little bit ago, you brought back the defensive staff and the defensive players. You brought back basically the special teams, you know, except for Morstead, right? You're supposed to have struggles on offense. Everything is new on offense. Continuity is everywhere else. This is why I feel like, whether it's a successful moment, play, or day, or a bad day, or a bad play, or a bad moment, there's way too much overanalyzing about May and June football without pads. Yeah, like I said, like we're we're there, and so everybody, you know, I, I'm asked to do I'm asked to do a different task than a lot of my peers that that work for newspapers and that. You know whose whose editors are asking for for notebooks and daily what's it called daily updates and and goings on and blah blah blah. But it, man, and so it's hard, man. It, it's hard to put a notebook together. I f I feel for these guys that have to do it. Is it's hard to put a notebook together from practice, charting every little throw, breaking down every little breakdown and coverage and route and. This, that it's, has to be the that has to be the editor that wants this, right? Because I don't, I is, really is, don't is, think. Is, is this? I can't speak for place? anybody else. I can't speak for anybody else, but I have never had desire to do a practice notebook or a, a training camp notebook. Like I, I have never had a desire. Like it's. Well, I, I, I would love to ask if if that something actually, significant happens. Is that something that gets clicks on the newspaper? I wonder. Because I, I just kind this of, time of year, of course, man. Because what else? What other news is there? Like you want to be able to say, like, oh, I know every little thing that's going on. So like, there's a value to it in making people feel like an insider. But I mean, truth be told, it's just kind of a facade because like they're practicing, man. What happened? They learned. They're learning. Right. That, that's that's right. what's happening. 
Then training right. camp is a little bit different. Like training camp, okay, because now you got guys who are on roster bubbles who are trying to, you know, fight for positions and so on and so forth. Training camp, I understand it a little bit more, but OTAs and minicamp, I'll let you know if something significant happens. If someone looks especially good or especially bad, but just like Tua went 17 of 24 or 17 of 26 for a guesstimate amount of yards, it's just – it's not really for me, man. It's not really for me, but it's an important time of year for the team. It's mm -hmm. just covering that. It's almost harder to cover OTAs than it is to cover owners' meetings or the combine. You know what I mean? For like, sure. for like sure. It's, yeah. You really got to dig. You really got to scrape the barrel sometimes when it comes to OTA and minicamp. Yeah, the other stuff you're actually getting like actual news here. It's almost like you've got to try to search for it. And then you've got to be very careful because you're treading through stuff that really there isn't a lot of substance in it outside of, oh, hey, Connor will Connor is working at center. OK, well, they're really committed to him. That's yeah. new. To you. That's something you can talk about. You know but what I mean? But, talk about it because Connor talked about that. Right. That's what I'm saying. But that's newsy. So that becomes but a, a bad play or a good play in, in May or June. Bro, I mean, are, are you kidding me? Are you kidding so, me? Seriously. I mean, no, great and, then the over, and then the overreaction on a on a good play or a bad play. On a good play, you're going to the Super Bowl. On a bad play, you're going to win three games and you're and Teddy Bridgewater starting. It, 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 it's just it just becomes, you know, in other words, I think you're a little disappointed that you're not covering a quarterback that has his. 24th lawsuit right i mean that that's really what you'd rather have here in, Dol in dolphin land right yeah, absolutely not uh, offer my thoughts and condolences to not only everybody who's who you know has to cover that but uh you know everybody impacted by this overarching lawsuit i know there's only so much that i could say but uh no man i don't want i don't want any part of that I don't want any Can part of that. that as a fan, as a writer, as a player. Yeah. It's 24, man. Look, I, I, like I said, I got to be careful about what I can and can't say, but it's 24, it's 24 suits. It's a, it's a bad look for the league. And it's hard to get 24 league. people to agree to do something. It's hard to say, get 24 people to, to tell the same story, to have the same anything. So, yeah. 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 You know, still, so, uh, I don't think, uh, yeah. So I don't I'm think glad the Dolph does. I'm glad the Dolphins didn't do it because then I would have to be ripping the Dolphins constantly for being so desperate to win that you'd put up with this circus, whether it's true or not, we don't know, but just it's this cloud that would hover over you. And oh my God, it, it, it's just so, it, football's hard enough. Like, it's hard enough to just win. It's hard enough to just find the right players and get the right coaches and all that to then have to do it with all this other crap. Oh, man, I can't. I, you know, we've watched it. Bully Gain and all this other stuff that we've had down here. You're just like, you know, you, you didn't want. I, I'm glad that I'm not seeing another one of those because that's what you would have been writing. You would have been writing more about all the non-football stuff affecting the team. And then you have to then ask Teron Armstead about Deshaun Watson. And then you know, and I, what I was, was that, and I that love that this about uh I, I love it about uh you know it, and anytime you've got to ask your your team's fan or uh, players or coaches about something that doesn't directly have to do with the X's and O's of football, then there's always going to be those people in your mentions that stop asking about this. It's ask football question, blah, 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 this and that, man. Like summer 2020 had me not ready to leave the industry, but had me ready to leave Twitter or, you know, right. Right. turn off eyes or something. Cause it was just like, bro, like, cause again, it would be like, we're in May and June, bro. What the hell you want me to ask? Right. What do you want, exactly. me, to what do you want me to ask in May? <laughs> Uh, let me ask you something. Let me it's ask gonna you be something. so illuminating for you. It's crazy. We'll have a we'll have Omar on tomorrow, and uh, I, I disagree with him on this. But he feels that Tua needs to be more open with his teammates because he's kind of a reserved guy. 
Um, I disagree. I just think that that happens in all walks of life. Not everybody's always outgoing. As long as you're communicative, which I think he is as a quarterback, I don't think you have to be the raw, raw guy as the quarterback. I don't think you have to be the intense in-your-face guy all the time as a quarterback. Again, as long as you can communicate and play, I think you'll win everybody over either way. Do you feel that he has to be the alpha male like too in the locker room? Need? No. Does he need to be that? No, he doesn't. And, and for no other reason than, like, people can tell when you're faking the funk. And so if he's out here being something that he is, he is not, if he's, if he's trying to act like something that he is not, it comes off as disingenuous and guys will pick up on that. Like, lead how you're going to lead. I don't think he needs to be more open. I don't think he needs to be, you know, tight Could and coach and buddy, buddy and talk it with every, all of his teammates. But, yeah, it, it'll, it would help. But, like, need is the operative word here. I don't think he needs to be. I think it would help. I don't, I, I don't think it would hurt him. But, like, at the end of the day, you have to you have to be what you are. You have to be the best version of what you've got, man. Like, you can't be out here – you can't be fake. Like, if I – if I joined the the Florida Panthers beat, man, I, I I could be the most prolific writer of all time. I don't know hockey, and you'll be able to tell. In every story, right. I, you will be able to tell this man is not <laughs> he is not a hockey writer. He right. sir, right. he is lying. So like, right. don't be you know you can't fake it. No, like I don't I don't I don't think that like, his teammates or fans or coaches should want him to go out there and be something that he's not. But yeah, it would it would help if he was you know. If he was more of a presence in the locker room, sure. Hey, Russell Wilson, most of these guys aren't partying with Russell Wilson, bro. Now, I'm sure he communicates and talks to his guys, but Russell's not the guy that's going to be hanging with you, going to go to the club and make it rain, or he's not going to go to, you know, some concert with you or something. You know, he's just not going to be the guy that's going to be pushing any kind of envelope. He's going to be a straight and narrow guy. And it hasn't affected the way he plays the game and the way people respond. And I, I, I think there's this misconception out there uh, that you've got to be one of the fellas. And you no, know, you really don't. You just got to be able to prove that you can play and co co coexist with your teammates. To me, that's really what it's all about. But here's what here's the flip side that I would ask you on all of this, because it happens with Tebow. It happens with Russell Wilson. It happens with Tua. It happens with maybe Mike Trout to a certain extent. Um, I don't know how much you follow baseball on that one. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, you are a baseball fan, actually, so you do follow baseball. Um, there are certain guys that they're kind of corny. They're kind of, um, they're they they they're different than us because more often than not, they're really comfortable always doing the right thing, mm -hmm. which is something that most of us human beings can't do, you know. <laughs> and Cal Ripken is one of those guys. Tony Gwynn was one of those kind of guys, you know. They're boring. They're kind of geeky. They're kind of I don't know. I don't know how you want to you know describe them. But they don't have the same swag that we're used to seeing from Joe, Joe, Joe Namath to uh, Michael Vick to Lamar Jackson now to um, uh, Pat Mahomes to, you know, guys that have swag and they play the game and they're cool and they're, you know, they, they just are able to flow with everything. Those guys are different than these kind of guys. And I think that Tua falls into kind of that, I don't know, he's kind of corny, kind of geeky, kind of whatever, but he's just a dude that does everything the right way. He handles things the right way, on and off the field, professionally, life. His priorities are way better than all of ours because that's just the way these, these Tebos of the world are wired. These kind of dudes, these Derek Cheaters. You know, you, you just wonder, like, Derek Jeter, dude, you're in New York. Hey, Women hold up, hold up. all over you. How do you not screw up, bro? How do you not get arrested? 
How do you not get drunk one night and go off on somebody? Never happens. Oh, I thought you were, I thought you were about to say Derek Jeter wasn't outside. I was like, you need to Google Derek Jeter, my man. <laughs> you need to Google his, no, his starting no, eleven. Right, but but considering that he, you know, he he put the sword in battle, he never got in trouble, is what I'm saying. He never yeah. picked up the wrong girl. You understand what I'm saying? These people are different than us. They don't make mistakes. And there's something about them that I think turns average guys off because they don't have an edge to them. Not how they play. It's how they live. And there's no edge to the way they live. There is no gronk in them. Tom Brady now, we see he has an edge and he's funny and he'll take chances and he'll do things. These kind of cats stay in that lane, bro. And they're so disciplined. So explain to me how maybe that also affects Tua and the way people look at him. I don't think he is. I don't think that his personality is just to be like kicking it like that. Like he just really likes to golf, play football, or hang out with his family. So, uh, I mean, that's, and from what, I told, from what I understand, like that's how. That's how he was in at Alabama too. You know, they win a big game, and he's gonna go back home and you know hang out with his his dad, his brothers, mom. Like he's gonna go hang out with his family. He's not gonna be out with the boys. He's not gonna be out in the club at the bars or you know partying. In the, he's not. He's, but we hold it against these dudes. Russell Wilson has suffered that criticism at times. You know what I mean? These dudes get criticized for this. Yeah, and I mean, Russ is, and, and Russ they, is corny. And like, they, let's, not, let's not get it twisted. Like, he is corny, but there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I mean, they, they like, just what's your, what's the, this on Russell they, Wilson. Oh, my God. He you treats see Broncos it. video? Did you see that Broncos video, that cheering video or whatever? They, they're killing Russ for that. But that's the team's fault for making Russ do that and then put it out there when that's not who he is, dude. Why are you doing it? It's what you just said. When you try to be what you're not, it gets exposed and poor Russell Wilson this weekend. Perfect like, example for all the corny he, stuff Russ has ever done. I think the absolute bare, like not even debatable corniest thing he has ever done or said is that hey Seattle, we got a deal like laying in bed video. I thought, cause that didn't sound like him at all. Like that was the corniest thing because again, when you fake the funk, people can tell. So I, I don't have a problem with it to be yourself, bro. Like just go, Go play the but, position. But but it's like, that's it matters. There, there's an Omar Kelly writing. Well, he needs to open up. He needs to. But why, dude? All he needs to do is prove that he can ball. And everybody will shut up and leave him alone after that. Yeah, they'll say he's kind of corny, this, that, whatever. I've heard it already. I saw it with Tebow. I saw it with Tony Gwynn. I saw it with Cal Ripken. I see it. All these guys that are just plain Jane and they just mind their own business. It's We criticize those guys, bro. It's like the weirdest thing how we hold it against those kind of dudes. And the thing oh, is, like, I don't think – I mean, too, it can be funny. That was funny. That press conference the other day, I thought that was hilarious. That was even, the one, even the last time that we spoke with him in the, uh, in the media room, the beginning of, I think, uh, OTAs, I think it was funny. He's personable when he opens up. The thing is, like, right. quarterbacks especially can be so buttoned up at the podium that you just kind of assume, oh, wow, that's how they are. But, like – I don't know, man. Like I could see Tua doing the match, you know, one of those type of deals where you know, out on the golf course, the camera crew following me around. Like I think he's, I think he's personable enough. I just don't think he was comfortable any of the past two years. Like I don't think he was personally comfortable being himself, being outwardly himself in either of the past two years. So you know, this year here we go. We are three months, three months, four months into Mike McDaniel's tenure, and he, he's. Talking spicier than he ever has. I mean, I, I think I can just leave it like that. Than he ever has. College, high school, you? pro. He just might say, just be, dude, go be yourself. Be as comfortable as you can be in yourself, but also go do the work. Like there's a trade off. Yeah, man, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say, but do the work. Put the work in. Show it up on the field. We've had Call this conversation up. before. Run. Say? I said, you and I have had this conversation before with Bill Belichick, you know? Right, right. It might, exactly. be, it might come off weird, but the ends justify the means. 
Follow him on Twitter, Marcel underscore LJ. Don't forget, smooth, delicious, zero aftertaste, edge energy drink. Order it. Use my code Big O. Get 10% off. Go to myedgedrink.com, myedgedrink.com. Get 10% off the best energy drink on the planet, baby. Edge energy drink. A man that always has the edge. Always has the T-bone, bro. Got to hear This guy is a Bills fan. I grew up a Raiders fan. But man, read a book. Do your research. Just Google it. You can find it. Google me. No, no, you covered the Bills, so you're a fan. That, uh, yeah, that's, they, the, they, that's how it works. Some guy, some guy goes to me last week. I, go, I can tell Omar is not a fan. I go, he's not supposed to be a fan, bro. They're not there. They're there to cover the team, not to put on pom-poms. Okay? That's just not the way it goes. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, my brother. Thank you for taking some time. We'll catch up later in the week, my friend. Appreciate it. Right, Good to see you. See you all Thursday. You got it. There you go. Marcel Louis Jacques getting it done.